Hello and welcome. You're watching Vision Plus. And you know that uh, we, God gives us a vision for what we're supposed to do for our life, not what Thaddeus Brooks thinks I should or Mark Bill, if you'll meet me in just a minute. But he wants us to fulfill our life for him and get the vision and carry out that vision. And I tell you, sometimes I don't want to do this. Or, but, I let, but let me tell you what it says in Joshua. It says, Be strong and of good courage, and the book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. And then you shall make your way prosperous, have great success, and have I not commanded you, um, be strong and of good courage. It says it again. Be not frightened or dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So we've got to remember that we are living for his good pleasure. And uh, Tony and I started this many years ago to, because uh, I worked in commercial television and I didn't always like what they wanted me to do and who they were. Uh, so I decided, he decided we would do this. So we'd like to hear from you. We're going to talk about relationships today. You know... I was at our club uh, meeting here in the village of Providence, and one of the persons at the table said, we were talking about relationships, he said, I haven't seen my dad in, I don't know how many years, 20 years. And he said he was so hard on me, and he was um, very high up in the Marine Corps. Tony was Marine Corps, but he was not that high up, I guess. But he treated all of the family like he was the uh, a sergeant uh, what's that what's that word that you use uh, the you know when the sergeant is um, telling you all the things you have to do drill sergeant is that called drill sergeant I think, I think it so is. okay <laughs> but one of the things I have observed in Tony and I did um, a lot of marriage uh, relationships and a lot of times it's just so many people, divorces happen because one of these, my friends is getting a divorce and I, oh, it hurt me so bad because her, her husband's not paying enough t attention to her. And many times the fathers and the sons uh, in our own family, I have family members that I was talking to them and said, How, what, what are you and your dad doing? He said, I have no relationship with my dad. My heart breaks when people don't. But here is a person, Mark Beal. And Mark uh, was one of my teachers in Sunday school. And then he moved into the, took over the spiritually single. I think I need to go back to that class. But Mark Beal, wel welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now you and your son just uh, returned uh, recently, pretty recently, from a trip. Tell us about how that came about. And what all you did? Um, and why? Tyler, my oldest son, um, was in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. He is uh, an officer in the Army and was assigned to uh, a combat outpost and uh, Mushan combat outpost. And, and he had had a, a really rough year there. And he got block leave. And Tyler is a linguist and a cryptologist and speaks lots of languages and lived in Germany. And he loves Germany. And he said, Dad, I would love for you to show you all about Germany and take you and give you the grand tour. And so when he got block leave, we had this dream, well, let's just go. And we actually decided to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And he uh, flew in, met me in Atlanta. We climbed on a plane together and flew to Stuttgart together and spent two weeks touring Germany and Austria and mm -hmm. Switzerland and France. And we had a wonderful time. Now, how had you and Tyler gotten along prior to this, uh, him going into the military? And you have five kids, so, or all together, so. Tyler and I have been really, really close over the years. Um, uh, four of the children are mine, mm -hmm. and uh, about 10 or 11 years ago, we had a really hard time in our home, and, and it ended up that we ended up just me and the kids. And, uh, by way of a divorce and Tyler was very close to me during that time he was the oldest of his siblings and he and I 
became really good friends. Um, he'd had a, <clears throat> a, a great experience in college, finding himself struggling, and finally came to terms with who he was. And, um, and he's always been very close to me. He's got a seriously big heart, and he's compassionate, and worries about his brothers and sisters. He just cares more for other people than he does himself. Mm -hmm. And that made me very proud. So we've always been close. We've always depended on each other. And, um, and so we, we always talk. We talk almost every single day, even now. Uh, he lives in Alaska, and not a day goes by that we're not on the phone talking to each other. So um, we've just always been really close. What part of Alaska? He lives in Fairbanks right now. Oh, my goodness. And <laughs> I have a nephew that lives there. That is cold. cold. It's very cold. Um, he and his wife are there, and they attend church at Northern Lights Church of Christ there. I tell you what. Northern Lights are one thing to see. It, uh, we were there. I spoke in um, Anchorage, and we took the train north, uh, north to Alaska. Anyway, we took the train north and stayed at a resort, two two houses from Sarah Palin's house, right on the water, and it was just the Lord I know, cause the the aurora borealis came right in. It felt like it was at the window. Like you could just see it, like it was right there at the window. All the colors, the beautiful aqua, the colors of this, 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 and then it would fade into colors of orange and red. So that he he's got a beautiful place to see. He does. Mm -hmm. He does. What is he doing there? <clears throat> he is still in the military. Mm -hmm. He is um, fixing to become a captain. Mm -hmm. He 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 handles a lot of the planning, uh, strategic planning for missions and things like that. Um, he's trying to to move into military intelligence and maybe move into Arizona. We hope oh, a little yeah. closer to home. Hope and a little warmer. A little bit warmer. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that may be in the works by the end of the year. I don't know yet. Well, when he makes captain, tell him not to do like your friend Bonnie <coughs> brother did. He was making captain, and so as the other person was retiring, he was supposed to make the speech. So. They're having, you know, the retirement party, and finally one of his uh, people said, Joe, you're supposed to go thank him for all his work that he's done and congratulated. Scared him so bad because he didn't know he was going to make a speech. He got up to the microphone, couldn't remember his name. He said, well, we want to thank, oh, what's his name for doing all the work that he did, and I, know, I understand all of you like a short sermon, so let's give him a round of applause, and that's the... That's the speech for today, and the old days went wild. So tell him to remember if he makes captain, who was that guy that he's replaced? I, I will. Now, you have uh, been helping singles for a long time yes, at the church, and you know that a lot, probably everybody in the class has had a relationship challenge. Now, you got along with your son. And you were always close, but what about your other four children? And what about my friend that says, oh, I haven't talked to my dad in 20 years? Um, I do have, well, now that I'm, I've remarried, I have a stepdaughter, Jamie. Don't even want to call her stepdaughter. I hate that term. She's my, my daughter. That's right. Um, so Karen and I have five. Relationship with your kids are, are a seriously big deal. Um, you're always a parent. God placed them in your care. He expects you to watch over them and care for them, even when they get grown. Because you always need your mom or dad. You always do. Um, that's a bond that God put there that should never be broken. Um, even Tyler, as powerful he is, as he is now, he still calls me about little things. Even though he knows the answer, he just wants affirmation that I'm close by and that I won't leave. And Carissa, the same way. She uh, just gave us our first grandchild. And, um, and so that's a whole different ball game now as I get to hold a granddaughter for the first time. And now I've got another one that I want to talk to and rock and, and write things to and share and read to. And then Jared, uh, he's so much like me. He's like a hurricane, um, plays hockey, and he's trying to find himself right now. He's 22. And, uh, he and played pro hockey. He played semi-pro, semi -pro. junior pro hockey. He mm -hmm. did in San Antonio, Texas. Um, and then my baby, Sharina, she's 17. 
she is so not a baby anymore. Um, <laughs> you know, she's finishing up her first year of college, has a full-time job. At 17. At 17. At 14, mm -hmm. full-time job. And bought her own car. She's very driven, very motivated. But she wants lunch with me. She wants date nights with Dad and movie time. She wants shopping trips to Bridge Street for clothes and go and watch her Tron. And she wants to sit down with me at the end of the day and talk about her work and her boyfriend and vent, you know. And the kids need it. And you've got to give them that, that they really need that. Now, I, <clears throat> tell us a little bit about your uh, growing up. and your Because I was thinking that I heard your testimony one time when you were teaching over uh, the class. What what is what went on? There? Um, growing up, um, my parents um, moved to Eastern Kentucky when I was about five. My dad's a minister, and uh, we went into Appalachian Mountains, coal mining area, and and he began. He and mom helped Laverne Congregation in Nashville begin a work there. So I grew up in the coal mines and the mountains of Appalachia where the Hatfield and McCoys come from. And, um, and so I got to learn a lot of things then early on about people, relationships. Uh, uh, I got to experience poverty on a serious level with people in Appalachia. You know, they were very, very poor people, uh, very much clannish, very tight with their relationships. And, and it was actually a wonderful experience to grow up in that kind of world to see how families hung together. They didn't like outsiders very much, and, and they're, they're wonderful people. Their culture is very wonderful. So I grew up in an environment where families depended on everybody. My family was very tight, my mom and dad, with me and my brothers. Uh, we were always close. They were always there. And so that's just all I ever got to see. Um, I moved back here to Alabama at 16 uh, for basketball reasons and ended up attending Mars Hill Bible School in Florence, and um, and ended up in college at, at UNA, and then moving later on to UAH here in Huntsville, and um, and so um, the things that probably helped make me is when my dad was in Kentucky, he was seriously big on helping people. He had a lot of compassion, so he was all the ways out, uh, you know, uh, on snowy winter days hauling coal. When people couldn't get out of the hollers, to, they burned coal instead of wood in a fireplace and groceries and things and helping people that didn't have stuff. I always rode with him in the truck with him. So even when I was a little boy, he's dragging me along, which dragging me sometimes was the right word. But as I got older, I understood how important it was for him to have done that for me because I got to see and be exposed to early on about it was that was life was helping people that's life you know mm -hmm. but anyway I'm sorry you, well <laughs> I my dad we burned coal in a stove pot bellied stove when I because my dad Sherman William paint store burned and we had to move out and the story gets better each year my children say walked three miles barefoot through the snow. They said, now it's 10 miles, but we didn't have electricity, <laughs> running water, and all that. And it gets better and better every year, <laughs> that story. He'd take his, use his hip boots to walk uh, through the mud holes to get me to the <laughs> bus. Yeah. <laughs> but now, uh, another thing that um, I remember about your testimony is you don't use banks, and you want to tell us a little bit about oh, how that came along? That's kind of private. Wow, <laughs> oh, you, okay. you don't mind probing, do you? Um, well, so far, I mean, just, I, I guess if you want truth, then that's what you're looking for. That's fine. Mm -hmm. um, I went through a hard time in the last part of the 90s. Uh, I hurt myself tremendously and hurt my back really bad and broke it and had to have surgery. Whoa. Um, I went through a terrible bankruptcy at the time. Um, I learned a lot of We've things. We've been through bankruptcy. I've learned a lot of things. Um, I started a small business which got very big and made a lot of money and money does things to you and a lot of times not the right things to you and um, and God was fortunate. I'd like to find out. <laughs> God, God was fortunate enough to instead of to try to take me for my stupidity he just decided to maybe hurt me and wake me up. Oh, boy. So I got a really wonderful chance to lose everything I had <laughs> and to for him to educate me about a better way to live with life. 
and um, and then went through a, a divorce. So a lot of things happened in about a year and a half period Ooh. there that was pretty hard. Mm -hmm. And I ended up with the kids, and so I had to recreate myself. Reengineer yourself. I did your uh, wife about would income say. and about mm -hmm. way to make a living. And I learned a lot of things. I learned that money can kill you. That um, how do you mean can, money can kill you? You become so absorbed in material things. Oh. Uh, you become so absorbed in the fact that you created your world, that you are Midas, that I did this for me. And you can slowly become fooled into thinking that you you created your own, you know, your own castle, your own dynasty, that I'm the one who made this empire. And that's so not true. And uh, And what I learned is that debts and owing money and and banks and things those are really in a lot of ways kind of worldly things and I know a lot of people don't take that view but what I did learn is, is I don't want to use those methods for my money anymore and I really don't want the money if you put it in my hands I'm just gonna give it away because I'm I don't like that period of time left such a stink with me about the way it feels it left such a bad taste in my mouth I'd rather just give it away I'd rather find somebody who needs it, somebody who could use it, because it's not my money. And I, I had to learn that. It's not mine. God put it in my hands for me to use the right kind of way, and it's, and it's, it's his. And so I had to figure out the hard way that it wasn't mine. And now I'm determined I don't want it <laughs> anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm okay if I make it. I'm okay if I get it. And that just gives me opportunities to do things with it. So that's the way I look at it now. How's Karen ha handled that in the five that's, children? That's been a little tough because um, he is my, a my, 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 my approach to life is very different. I don't have credit cards. I don't use banks. I don't have a checking account. I don't have a retirement or a 401k. I have no savings. I don't even try. I know without a doubt that God will take care of tomorrow, and I'm not scared of that. Mm -hmm. That's a little different for Karen. When she married me, she walked into this and said, oh, my goodness, I don't know if I can handle this or not because, um, you know, she grew up in a different kind of environment, and that's okay because we're both learning from each other. How in the world did you two meet and get married? <laughs> we met on a basketball court, oh, okay. actually. We, met, we, we attended church at the same place. And we're in a single parenting program, um, but we basically met on a basketball court. Um, she was playing for a church league, and they uh, had invited that her team won all the time or whatever. And I just come into the the, the 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 single parenting program kind of new there, and and I was invited. You know, they found out I had a little bit of history with basketball, and said, "Well, would you come down and play with us?" And I said, "Sure." I said, "Well, we've got this team that can't be stopped, kind of thing, and they've got this." Hall of Fame woman basketball player down here that's just raking everybody. And I said, she's just a girl, you know, it's just a girl, <laughs> come on. So we went down there and I walked onto the court and we spanked them seriously bad. Oh. And, uh, and she left pretty upset with the whole situation. Really? I think she had a, a dislocated thumb. Uh, I think she had bruises all over her body and she quit in the middle of the game and said I've had enough I don't want this anymore really? and and so she didn't want to talk to me <laughs> and um, I watched her for a while and decided she she's was calling you now she was a really sweet girl and so I waited three or four months and decided that she might be worth the effort to pursue <laughs> and uh, and we did and she's never forgotten that basketball game and uses it on occasion uh, to remind me how ugly I can be. But, you know, I just told her, I said, listen, this is my house. It's my court. If you come to my house to play on my court, I will win. And I'm sorry I don't take prisoners. <laughs> so she had to learn early on that I was pretty vicious. High paid personality. We're two alphas in the same house. Yes, oh, we no. are. And the kids. Well, you seem to get along so well. Uh, it's it's weird, the dynamics. You know, mm -hmm. it's weird. Two alphas typically can't survive together. But we have, for some reason, we give way to mm -hmm. each other. For some reason. I don't know if it's what the chemistry thing mm -hmm. or, or we both understand where the other one has come from mm -hmm. and we're able to see deep inside at the value of the other one. But we give way. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, with blending two houses, two homes into 
you know, two sets of kids. There are a lot, there are some dynamics issues there, uh, and we've worked hard to get through those, you know. Um, what are some of the dynamics that you had to work Early through? on, kid, our, our kids loved us, you know. Mm -hmm. My kids loved her, and Jamie and I finally got to be friends and, and that kind of thing. But once you come under the same roof, she's not my mother. You're not my real mother. You can't tell me what to do. Um, and, you know, I don't have to listen to you. You know, there's lots of stuff. And how do you work through the blended family? How? What is the what? What are the love, words you use? Love and patience. Mm -hmm. What do you say when they say you're not my daddy? Um, you're right. I'm not. Okay. But I love you. Mm -hmm. I'm here. I'm here for the long haul. I will not leave you. I'm not going to push you. I will give you your space to sort it out. I'm not trying to be your dad. I'm not trying to be anything more than someone who cares about you. And as long as you keep coming at a child with, you're right, I'm not, um, I'm going to love you. Even if you don't love me, I'm going to love you. Um, sooner or later, they wear down. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is consistency and trust really matter. Consistent always there and sooner or later the trust comes into play mm -hmm. and to don't just pick and choose you've got to be consistent on every situation and when my kids would come at Karen I would tell her you know I'm not going to defend you here you need to defend yourself you need to stand your ground with them because if you do then they will learn to respect you if I defend you every single time then they're not going to learn to respect you Stand up to them, get in their face, tell them you love them, and tell them you're not going anywhere, and that you're not going to be run off. And that's the thing. You have to, they have to see that you're not going to run off. And I think that's the bottom line when they push, both sets push you. You know, they've been abandoned once before. They're really pushing to see if you're going to, if you've got what it takes to stay, if you're the one that can take it this time and mm -hmm. stay. And I think they're really, they're really trying to test you. And they are terrified. They're scared. They're, mm -hmm. They're you know, scared. Um, you know, the worst thing you can do to a child is take away their stability, mm -hmm. their home stability. You know, if dad gets scared, you know, kids are fine in the house. As long as dad's riding high and dad's strong and, and dad's stable, kids are fine. Now, they'll make their mistakes, but you let a parent become unstable and a parent becomes scared and a parent really not know which way is up and the whole house goes nuts. They can't Do you have any that. suggestions for my friend that uh, he said that he and his dad have not talked? Get, you had any of your people? Go get, go find him. Go find him. Okay. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. If you haven't had a history with him, then stop worrying about the fact you haven't had a history. Go create a history. Just go to him, find him, and sit down and say, hey, let's put it on the table. You're my dad. I miss you. You know, I think the, the best things you can do for relationships is to be honest and vulnerable. Allow yourself to be vulnerable. Allow people to see that you be open enough to, to put your stuff on the table and say, Dad, I haven't been a good son. Dad, this is not what we were meant to be. You know, you know we, and don't approach him with the things he's done wrong. Don't even go there. Dad, I don't want the years we've had to continue. I want something better with me and you. And just go tell him. I mean, every day he misses is a day lost. Mm -hmm. You know? Do, do you think you could help a girl that hasn't uh, seen her mother in years and doesn't have a relationship? Go to her. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. Stop wallowing in it. Stop sitting here fretting over it. Do something about it. I mean, I run into people all day long. They're in tears and they're hurting. I, all my life has been, I said, get up. Stop. Mm -hmm. And go change it. If you don't like the conditions you're under, then change them. You don't, you don't have to stay there. Well, Mark Beal, we started out with you and your son uh, traveling together and him showing you Germany. I love Germany. In fact, the lady that was by me last night was from Stuttgart and that's moved here into this community because her husband uh, worked with NASA so they're here but I, 
I would like to ask you if you have some relationship uh, challenges. I do believe with all my heart that Mark Bill would be happy to talk to you and happy to uh, that he and Karen could show you how a blended family can be. And it's not easy. We have a blended family and uh, Thaddeus has, I hardly know anyone doesn't have a blended family. Mm. And it's, uh, we wish we could erase what went on before, but we can't. We have to go with starting today. And I think that what has helped uh, me and my daughter and my son, our da one daughter got killed. She was a Russian interpreter, some of you know. But I think that one of the things is that we do exactly what uh, Mark has said. Be honest, be uh, strong, and be stable. I like that. And you cannot do that, I don't think, without the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and that he died for you and for me. And I would like to ask you, if you want to call us and talk to us about uh, you uh, giving your life to the Lord or rededicating your life to the Lord, because most of the people that watch this program already are Christians, but sometimes uh, I get a call and they're just telling me how wonderful it is. So, Mark Beal, thank you very much you for very sharing welcome. your really enjoy anything it. that you can say that uh, would h help in the last minute of the time um, Re relationship what you just touched on <clears throat> nothing can be accomplished without a really strong faith and belief in God nothing um, everything is possible um, if you search for him with all of your heart he will find you mm -hmm. um, if you open your heart up to being honest with people, your family and friends, he will step in. He mm -hmm. will. Um, I don't believe that any relationship can function, whether it be uh, two people married, uh, a, a, you know, parents and children, siblings, or anything. I don't think any relationship functions without God in that mix. Somewhere. And if you are spiritually single, you can come to his class. And just call that number and we'll tell you when it is and where it is. I'm Bonnie Liphart along with Mark Beal and Thaddeus and bless your heart for watching. Mm -hmm.